I'm not concerned with your liking or disliking me. All I ask is that you respect me as a human being. Jackie Robinson Jackie Robinson was only 28 years old when he started playing for the Brooklyn Dodgers in 1947. Baseball was a segregated sport at the time, making the major leagues white only. Black athletes were separated from the MLB by a color line that put African Americans into their own Negro leagues. Robinson broke through the color line after receiving an invitation from a man named Branch Rickey to play for the MLB. Jackie Robinson led the Dodgers to victory in many circumstances and became the first African American athlete in history to play on a major league baseball team. Jack, or Jackie Roosevelt Robinson, was born on January 31, 1919, in Cairo, Georgia. Being the youngest of five, Robinson was born into a sharecropping family. After Robinson's father, Jerry Robinson, left the family in 1920, when Jackie was only six months old, he was raised into poverty by his mother, Mally Robinson. The family soon after moved to Pasadena, California, Fifteen years later, in 1935, Robinson graduated from Washington Junior High School and soon after enrolled at John Muir High School. His older brother, Mac Robinson, was a silver medalist at the 1936 Olympic Games in Berlin. Mac inspired Jackie to go out for sports. He was a star athlete and played varsity for track, basketball, baseball, and football. Robinson found a great interest in sports. He loved it so much because unlike most things back then, the way you were treated wasn't based on the color of your skin. It was based on your performance in the sport. Robinson graduated and went to Pasadena Junior College where he continued his sports. Taking up the same sports he had in high school, Robinson was leadoff hitter and shortstop for the school's baseball team. He was crowned as the region's most valuable player for baseball in 1938. He was further educated at the University of California, Los Angeles. Surprisingly, Robinson had a .97 batting average in his only season at UCLA, making baseball his worst sport. He left UCLA early just before graduation due to money problems. In 1941, he moved to Honolulu, Hawaii to play for the Honolulu Bears semi-professional football team. Robinson moved back to California after a brief season of playing, but by that time, Pearl Harbor had been attacked by the Japanese, thus beginning World War II. Robinson was drafted into the Army in 1942 and served until 1944. He was a second lieutenant for the United States Army until he was arrested in 1944 after boarding a segregated Army bus during a training session. The bus driver requested Robinson to move to the back of the bus, but he refused causing him to be court-martialed and to receive an honorable discharge from the army. Robinson's actions on that bus were a mere minority compared to the impacts he would make against segregation in the future. In 1945, Robinson was offered a job by the Kansas City Monarchs to play baseball in the Negro Leagues. During this period in history, baseball was a segregated sport, and blacks played in different leagues than the whites, named the Negro Leagues. Robinson was a great player for the Monarchs with an impressive .387 batting average, but he was interested in the major leagues. He left the Monarchs that same year when he was approached by a man named Branch Rickey, president and club owner of the Brooklyn Dodgers. Robinson was among a list of prominent choices, but in the end, he was chosen. Rickey knew of Robinson's outstanding athleticism, but he was chosen for his ability to ignore racism directed towards him. There was never a man in the game who could put his mind and muscle together quicker than Jackie Robinson, Branch Rickey. A year later in 1946, Robinson was under a new contract with the Dodgers. At first, he played for the all-white minor league team, the Montreal Royals, who was also an affiliate of the Brooklyn Dodgers. Robinson showed flawless offense and defense while playing, along with his outstanding will to put up with all of the hatred that was directed at him without any reaction. At the end of the season, Robinson had a .349 batting average and a .985 fielding percentage. 
His performance was so outstanding that he was promoted to play a second season for the Brooklyn Dodgers. The date was April 15, 1947, that Jackie Robinson made his debut for Major League Baseball at 28 years old. That day, he became the very first African American in history to play for the MLB. That day, Jackie Robinson had officially broken baseball's color barrier. The game was at Ebbets Field, in front of a crowd with over 26,000 people, including around 14,000 African American spectators. Robinson did not get a base hit, but he walked and scored a run contributing to the Dodgers' 5-3 victory. However, the racial abuse followed him from the minor leagues to the major leagues. Robinson's promotion was incredibly mixed. There was also much racism received from other Dodger players. Some of them would rather sit out than play with Jackie Robinson. He was hated by other teams as well. Some St. Louis Cardinals threatened to go on strike if Robinson was to play. The threat stopped, however, when it was announced that any striking players would be suspended. So, as a result, opposing players resorted to aggressive physical ball play. One Cardinal named Eno Slaughter gave Robinson a 7-inch gash on his leg. During another infamous game, the Philadelphia Phillies and their manager, Ben Chapman, shouted extremely derogatory terms at Robinson. It wasn't all bad, though. Robinson did receive motivation and encouragement from other players. His teammate on the Dodgers, Pee Wee Reese, defended Robinson with his famous quote, You can hate a man for many reasons. Color is not one of them. Pee Wee Reese. Reese put his arm around Robinson in 1948 in front of a crowd that was jeering racial slurs before a game in Cincinnati. His action became a legendary gesture in baseball history. Reese was not alone. Robinson also received defense from league president Ford Frick, Commissioner Happy Chandler, baseball star Hank Greenberg, and of course, Branch Rickey. And even after all of that, Robinson managed to put all of the racism aside and focused on showing his skill in baseball. The racial pressure began to stop in 1948 as more and more African-American players entered the MLB. That year, Robinson hit 12 home runs and helped the Dodgers win the National League pennant. In the same year, he led the National League in stolen bases and was selected as the Rookie of the Year. During the 1949 season, he had a .349 batting average and received the National League's Most Valuable Player Award. Jackie Robinson became a hero, but Robinson was not all about baseball. He became a voice for African American athletes, civil rights, and other public and political causes. He testified before the House Un-American Activities Committee about discrimination in 1949. Three years later in 1952, he publicly called out the Yankees as a racist organization for not adding an African American player to their roster five years after he had began playing for the Dodgers in 1947. In 1955, Robinson helped the Dodgers win the utmost victory, the 1955 World Series. The Dodgers had previously failed in four other matchups, but this time, the Dodgers beat the New York Yankees. Robinson played one more season with the Dodgers and won one more National League pennant before he was traded to the Giants. Shortly after that, Robinson officially retired from baseball. Sadly, due to heart problems, Jackie Robinson died on October 24, 1972, at 53 years old. Jackie Robinson's impact on African American rights has to be remembered in the context of segregation and discrimination in the 1940s. His story took place in a time where Jim Crow laws still existed, and the civil rights movement was still in its infancy. By breaking baseball's color line, Robinson fought for all African American rights. It was his responsibility because he showed his bravery in a way that others could not. Jackie Robinson's story not only makes a milestone in baseball's history, but America's history as well. Life is not a spectator sport. If you're going to spend your whole life in the grandstand just watching what goes on, in my opinion, you're wasting your life. Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson hit that ball. It went zooming across the left field wall. Yeah, boy. Yes, yes, Jackie hit that ball.